Hey everyone, welcome back to eLearning Bridge. I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. So in today's video, we will be talking about top five AWS services for the data engineers because there are two popular trends of architecture in the IT industry. First is where companies are using open source tech stack on the on-premises systems. Along with that, they are also using the cloud services, the cloud tech stack part. So this is kind of hybrid architecture, I would say. And another, you can see a pure cloud-based solution, like everything end-to-end, -end, like your application that is completely running and hosted on the cloud. So these are the two kind of popular popular trends in the IT industry and same goes with the data engineering right whenever we build the data solutions these two architectures might come into the picture but you can sense it right in both of the architecture cloud part is common so cloud understanding of cloud is really really important nowadays and that can give you a cutting edge in the interview process as well and even in your profile selection if you have worked in any of the cloud tech stack and today in this video i'll be talking about the aws part which is most popular cloud service provider and guys this is not the only top five aws services which are being used for the data pipelines there are many more but i just want to keep a video short not very lengthy and want to give you a basic basic understanding so even if an aspiring data engineer is there who want to understand what is this and what kind of basics services he she should focus on i'll be talking about that one from the basic perspective giving the high level overview that what this service actually do right and i will be creating multiple part of these videos related to cloud services for different providers let's say amazon aws microsoft azure google gcp and also i want to know it from you guys that whether you have used cloud so far if yes then which cloud provider and how much do you understand the cloud so guys let me know your answer in the comment section and also after watching this video if you find it helpful and you find it very crisp to start your data engineering journey with the cloud tech stack then also like this video so that it can reach to maximum number of aspiring data engineers and if you're new to my channel then do subscribe for sure press the notification i can share this video for the cross knowledge sharing and also let's see this video can reach to 2000 likes or not and guys one special announcement for the software engineers who are preparing for their job interviews and even for the students who are preparing for their campus placement and if you are looking for the free resources then here this amazing platform coding ninjas can help you in that journey and their new initiative which is really great name as code studio and one amazing part is every resource is free here they have made it free for you like your preparation your journey so you can even see some really amazing things related to interview guide for the product based companies dsa competitive programming java c plus plus dbms python javascript fundamentals of the web development and many other important technologies tech stack related things and the free content is available here so i have provided the link in the description make sure you check this platform because these resources are completely free and really amazing content and these free resources will definitely help you in your interview preparation journey all right guys so these are our top five aws services for this video and after going through with this video you also need to deep dive into these services and for that you can refer official documentation by aws for every service and make sure to watch this video completely because in the end i'll be giving you a basic level of a problem which you need to design right it will be architecture i just need an architecture for that detailed architecture that would be really good and that solution you can send me over my instagram or my telegram group or LinkedIn anywhere you want okay so let's talk about first AWS services which is AWS S3 that means simple storage service and I'll be talking about its basic properties that what it actually does right so it is basically a scalable high-speed web-based cloud storage service so on a basic level if you want to understand that if you have a massive amount of data and you want to store it over the cloud then you need to use this service and second property is the 99.9999 percent durable like you can keep your data as long as you want and it won't get removed from there until unless you want to do that and let's say something happens from the aws side any kind of crash your data will be completely safe because they used to follow such kind of mechanism so data is replicated in such format third property is the security and which is very very important when we talk in terms of the data data security very very important part so whatever data you have stored in aws s3 it won't be consumable nobody can access it until unless you grant the access and another level of security you can apply that is the data encryption when you store the data in aws s3 it also gives you the facility to encrypt your data even using the default keys or some custom public private keys so that your data is encrypted so this is also one of the very important property now talking about the another AWS service which is AWS Lambda and very very popular so what actually happens when we write a set of program so to execute it we definitely need the resources right any kind of operating system server where my code is deployed and it is getting executed there so obviously you are completely dependent on the resources you need to manage it you need to maintain it everything from your end right so here this AWS Lambda plays a very very important role like if you have a set of logic or program or code piece you want to execute then this 
helps you a lot because it is serverless computing platform because uh, under the hood it will be using something but for you it is completely managed service you don't need to worry about the resources uh, spinning up the servers deploying there and then executing and nothing to worry about the resources everything will be taken care of by itself you just need to write your code and that will be executable by any kind of triggers schedule or events and third important property which is event driven that means uh, this piece of code will only be triggered if some specific event happened. We can basically let our Lambda function know that when you actually need to trigger, if such kind of event happen, any file creation or any kind of API hit, right, then you actually need to get triggered and compute. So these kind of thing happens. That's why it is event driven. And next the AWS EMR. So EMR is basically when we talk about the uh, big data part or the big data computation, there is a term distributed computation, right? So for the distributed computation, we need the cluster, we need commodity hardware so that our data is distributed on these data nodes. Okay. And whatever application we have written that will be submitted to the cluster and that will get computed on different, different worker nodes. Cumulative result will be sent to the client. When we talk about the on premises thing, this is very hectic, right? You need to basically manage all the resources, getting the, uh, let's say servers, spinning up them and set up everything from end to end scratch, right? Implementing all the security layers and many more like it's definitely a very very hectic thing and maintenance part is something which is uh, very very tedious here so here the aws has also provided us this aws emr which is elastic map reduce so this service basically uh, on demand kind of service like if you want to uh, scale your system right let's say you had a cluster which was of let's say 10 node, five node with some memory CPU configuration. And that is not enough for you. You actually need to scale. Okay. Means you need to add more and more commodity hardwares. So that will be really helpful. It actually simplifies running big data frameworks like Hadoop, Spark, Hive. So that's what I was talking like. You should have a first on premises cluster, set up a Spark there, and then you can write the Spark application. You will submit and everything will be executable for you. And here, all these things you can do in like fraction of seconds, just spinning up your services, mention, okay, you want to install a Spark in the EMR, it will be installed. You also want to install Hive on this EMR, that will be also. Just uh, click the checkbox and everything will be up for you. For these kind of AWS services, you are actually paying based on your uh, cluster configuration. And for the time you are actually using it for the computer. AWS Redshift, a very, very important service, I must say, uh, because at the end, when we talk about the data engineering, creating data pipelines, and the important thing is here, okay, we captured the data from source and also we applied the business rules, we transformed the data and we have the meaningful information. Now we need to store it to some downstream system so that the business users can run their analytical queries on top of it. And here AWS Redshift plays a very, very important role. So AWS Redshift is basically a data warehousing service. So if you don't know about the data warehouse, so it is a place where we will be storing all type of transformed and meaningful data that will be in some structured form, right? So we will be storing it there and that will be known as the data warehouse and guys here i would like to ask one important interview question what is the difference between data lake and data warehouse so let me know this difference in the comment section and please don't use google the aws redshift can actually handle a very massive scale of data which is in the petabytes and that probably cannot be done with the traditional uh, rdbms like mysql and these things okay because they are not that much scalable because those traditional transactional databases are not meant for the analytical purpose. Third is the parallel computation. So AWS Redshift also follows this kind of architecture master slave. That means whatever data is stored there, or let's say we have a very huge, huge table, uh, which is in uh, terabytes of size and let's say 100, 200, 500 millions of records. So that will be distributed on different, different nodes. Whenever someone fires an analytical query, so that computation will happen in parallel on different, different nodes and the cumulative result will be transferred to the master. And the fourth property is columnar storage because the traditional databases we have like MySQL, they store data in the row format. And here this columnar storage is actually the very important part of entire Redshift because this type of storage format actually helps Redshift to perform the analytical queries in very quick span of time because in those queries, most of the time aggregation functions will be done and those aggregation will be happening on some specific set of columns. And if those values are stored in a contiguous memory location, which is basically the concept of 
of column storage so your analytical queries gets executed very very fast and the last property is workload management because aws redshift works on a concept of cluster right at a time there can be 10 20 queries are running in parallel but assume there could be two three queries which are very critical for the business and that's how the redshift actually manages the workload part we can create the different priority queues for different different critical queries and when the query is fired that will be assigned to a specific priority queue and since it is in the priority queue it is a priority for Redshift as well to compute it as soon as possible. And that's how the Redshift manages the entire workload within the cluster. And the next property which will be important that is AWS CloudWatch. So CloudWatch is basically for uh, monitoring of resources and alerting event-based triggers, cron timestamp-based triggers. First, like monitoring of resources, what it means, health factor is also very, very important, right? When you are writing the large scale application. So continuously, you want to monitor that how much CPU utilization is happening, what is the cluster health and how much instances are getting used, uh, the load, the uh, CPU uses. Here, CloudWatch actually helps because it gives the flexibility to monitor the resources which we are using, okay? So that on top of it, we can also alert some alert mechanism so for an example just understand that we have one emr uh, service running uh, within our aws account and because of the extra load or because of some heavy computation uh, the cpu utilization is very very high in the emr so in that kind of scenario we definitely want to get the alerts as soon as possible and that's how we can even apply the checks let's say for a specific cluster cpu utilization is greater than 80 percent in that case cloudwatch will generate an alert and that alert can be transferred to any email service and we will get notified so because of these two services at least cloudwatch becomes very very important because we definitely want to monitor the health third thing is the event based triggers so event based triggers is also uh, why i am emphasizing again and again on event based because when we'll be talking about the data pipelines so most of the time you actually need to create event based data pipelines so for example let's say we receive some file in our source right and how we want to make it event driven that uh, as soon as file is received uh, one of my uh, spark application should get trigger and the computation should happen so who will actually take care of this part so definitely from that service which is actually copying the file to source location uh, we can actually send a event pattern right that will be captured by the cloudwatch cloudwatch will parse that event pattern and it will check for this event pattern what kind of rule we have created so that rule is nothing it is basically what will be the next action item for the cloudwatch like what it needs to trigger as a next step so that's how we can leverage this event based trigger property of aws cloudwatch and the last is the cron or timestamp based so let's say you uh, created one of your data pipeline and somehow uh, one of its component you want to trigger at a specific point of time right cron or timestamp based schedule so you can definitely do it with the help of the cloudwatch and i hope now you know the basic and you understand the basic of these top five aws services and just for your knowledge that you can interact with these services in two ways first using the aws console which is like a, a kind of web ui where you can find your services within your account and manage create anything and also you can do it programmatically like using the uh, boto3 library created by aws which actually helps you to interact with these uh, services in programmatic form using the AWS CLI commands. And now as I was uh, saying that I'll give you one problem statement. So the basic problem statement is that let's say uh, we have a AWS S3 as a storage service on daily basis within the S3, we will be getting some files from our client, right? So let's say today is 1 January, we received file from our client for 1st January and 2nd January, he will send another file and 3rd January, 4th January, so on. So daily file we are getting that is kind of incremental data. And the actual problem statement now is that you need to use these five AWS services and design an entire event driven data pipeline so here the source we understood that will be S3 because we'll be getting the data there as a downstream system we will be using the redshift right let's say in between we will be doing some computation it's up to you what you want to use I'm not going to tell you that how you need to transform you can apply any basic transformation from your end you can have this CSV file as an input within your S3 and the transform data will be loaded in the AWS redshift. So you know the source, you know the destination. I also talked about important services which somehow can help you to design this architecture. So now it's up to you that how you think, how you plan this architecture to create this entire automated event driven data pipeline. And you can share your solution to my uh, Instagram or my Telegram channel or the LinkedIn anywhere. And you can find those links within the description. So don't forget to check it. So that's what I had for this video guys. And don't worry, I'll create different different versions of this video where I will be talking about more and more AWS services. And along with that, I will also release videos for different cloud providers that is Microsoft Azure and GCP. So don't worry. 
Till then, just make sure to like this video for better reach. And whatever I have asked, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you are new to my channel, then don't forget to subscribe, press the notification icon. Lots of amazing content about to come. Till then, just stay safe, stay home, take care of yourself and your family too.